Chinese, who are the most, most uh, richest people in the world. Um, so Gloucester has preempted part of that process, but there's still more to do. Um, Russell has given you our thank yous. We, we appreciate Mayor Kirk being here tonight, Jim Duggan, Senator Tarr, <laughs> Chief Dench, and uh, Representative Ferrante, members of the school committee as well. Um, it takes all of us. It takes all of us to go to the cruise port tomorrow morning and support the efforts to keep the hospital alive. It's the same type of support that we're going to need to keep our water from being privatized or extracted. And I can't, cannot stand before you tonight without recognizing Helen Garland, who uh, kind of gave us the global perspective after 40 years at the UN and uh, for spurring Betsy on to start some research and, 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 and then to spur me on. <laughs> it's been three long years of my life, but uh, I couldn't have done it without them. And uh, the people that I work with on a daily basis, we still meet weekly. There's some flyers in the back that explains a little bit about what we do. Uh, but you're all invited to come to Ravenswood Park, the Cape Ann Discovery Center Trustees of Reservations has offered us a, a space on Monday nights at 7 p.m. We do our best to meet weekly. Uh, the fight is not over, but the uh, special announcement is the ultimate partnership between the public and the, and the public servants. We've had an unprecedented vote by the city council. We've had unanimous votes by the city council. We've had unanimous votes by our state legislation. Bruce Mackey, Linda Mackey, and Ann Rylander are here tonight. They've been working with the Water Infrastructure Finance Commission, and the chair, Senator Eldridge, uh, Jamie Eldridge from Acton, has asked who decides to write the legislation for a statewide effort for the uh, strongest anti-privatization laws on the books. This is a grand opportunity for Massachusetts to model. And it happened right here in Gloucester. That was the beginning, the start. We should all be proud of ourselves for forwarding this process. But it's going to take all of us to forward that process. I can't help but think of Carolyn O'Connor, who's been an advocate for our water supply for over 50 years. I asked Carolyn last year how long it took before she got any support from the public. She said it took about at least 10 years before someone recognized her <laughs> efforts. And Mr. Joe Orange, the lone wolf in, in the re protecting our reservoirs on a daily basis, day in and day out, takes the effort of folks like that. And they need to be supported. All of the Carolyn O'Connors, all of the jo Joe Oranges of, of of this community and across the nation and across the world. Because these many ordinances are many victories, but the corporations are finding ways to get around them. So we have to keep the vigilance going in order to preempt and to continue this process. Uh, I also cannot leave here tonight with mentioning that I had a visit from uh, a cousin, uh, Major Stephen Hall, who has returned from a year-long battle in uh, overseas, and he has returned with uh, 300 members of his troops intact. That is quite, I, let's give it up for Major Hall. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve Hall for protecting and preserving our rights to the democracy that we have in place that is being celebrated here tonight. The least I can do if you're gonna potentially lay down your, your life for me is to stand up for those rights. So I'm, I'm asking each and every member of this community to help us in this effort, to continue the vigilance, to pay attention to the issues especially privatization issues, whether it's fishing, water, education, and of course, health care. We did it. We have a lot more to do. 
Um, I think the one thing that we need to look at as well as um, potential legislation is trying to get our, our own people back to work fixing our own pipes. And uh, at the rate that it's going out there, we're looking at the public-private partnerships. And we need to continue this process with the, with the public partnerships in order to counter that. So at this time, I'm just, I'm asking who decides, who, who's gonna decide water? Who's gonna decide education? Who's gonna decide health care? It's really up to us, it's up to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roz. Are there any other members of Who Decide in the audience this evening? If, if there's other members here, would you please stand so that we can recognize and acknowledge you for Who Decides? Thank you. We'd like to thank you, and Senator Char and Representative Ferrante, thank you for all of your efforts. Together we can, together we did, and together we will again. Thank you very much. Does, would any city council, council, the city council president recognizes Councilor Toby, the co-author of the order that brought this before us. Two quick things. Um, the work that Who Decides has been doing has clearly gone over the uh, bridge to Boston. Um, these folks have been regular in their attendance at the Water Infrastructure Finance Commission. It has been heard. It has made a difference. Did Jamie Eldridge look at you with a little bit of the skepticism that Russell referenced in his earlier remarks? Oh, yeah. But the persistence and the substance of the arguments carried the day. Uh, secondly, this is real. I mean, this is real. Uh, I'm not going to name the system, but there is a major flip side of drinking water is sewer. And it's a slippery slope. Uh, there is a major sewerage system in New York State right now that has an RFP on the street, engineered by Morgan Stanley, always with our best interest at heart, the working class matters to Morgan Stanley not, for the, and I struggle to be able to say this word, it's, it never comes out smooth, the monetization of that system. The monetization of that system. What that has to do with public health, best interest of the economic vitality of the community served by it, beats the hell out of me. So stay on it, please, and thank you. Councillors, like to comments? Councillor Shalino, then Councillor Renee O'Taken. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you got, the organization is wonderful. And in, in sitting here tonight and listening to the hospital and all we've gone through, this is the kind of organization we, we needed 20 years ago to save our hospital. You know, who decides? And uh, here we are fighting, you know, for our hospital. But at least we, we take one battle at a time. Your organization is great. And we need to keep our destiny in the, desk, in the hands of the people of Gloucester. So keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, it was a, a process that, um, like Mr. Hobbs, um, took a lot of humble swallowing because I couldn't understand. And yes, I just filled up the water from the bubbler. Um, because it was, really um, untested waters, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, it came in front of us and there was a lot of, it came in front of our committee ONA. And yes, uh, thank you, Councilors Hardy and Toby. Um, but it also for bringing it out to the community for at the movie theater. <laughs> Roz, if I get another email about water, so help me, um, in showing us that other countries actually started before we did, you know, bringing it out to all the different cultures that we have in the community and what's happening in their own countries, Italy, et cetera, and, and, and I'm sharing that with the community and not realizing that I, I, when they first come, I said, who wants our water? We can't even drink it. It's a, you know, joke, but the fact is there was a scare. Someone did come forward and you know what? Water right now is like oil, and that's kind of scary. And the way things are, that we, we see that actually we have no say. And when they say you don't have a say, we did. And I want to thank you for continuing and believing that we need to 
have an opinion. I know that was kind of hard. We're arguing, and see, a lot of people in the audience and, and out there in, in the camera bill don't understand that most of our arguing does go in subcommittees where nobody's there and we can feel free and argue and be, be ourselves and you know, and, and they were saying, well, you know what, I don't want to take that away if it's going, what is, does it mean, home petition rule, and how does that go, and it's not going to go through legislation, it's going to take too long, and then the emails that Jackie kept sending, <laughs> Todd probably wants to change his email, and Ann Margaret, um, you know, where is it, asking Linda Lowe, stay on top of that, uh, we, let's not let this die like other things that took two, three years. Um, well, and some of the councils were saying, you know what, well, isn't it enough, we passed it. No, we want it, you know, we want the home petition rule and we want it on the ballot and we want this and, you know, and well, isn't that enough? And no, it wasn't. And they continue to show us and, and, and email us and talk to us and we argued, you know, we argued, well, you know, you're giving up the right to the mayor to make a decision and you're not believing the city council. And I said, wait a minute, not for nothing, I've been here 10 years and half the time I don't even believe myself. So let's not even go there. But the fact is you didn't give up. And you showed us a lot, and you taught us that, you know, we can work together no matter what our differences was, that we did. We did in subcommittee, and we rolled up our sleeves, and we drank the water, but it can't look at the conclusion. And um, if that's one thing that we did this year, and the IC42, and all these other things that are happening, when they say that this council in this city hasn't done anything, no, we didn't build a palazzo, they said. We didn't build the bird's eye. No, we didn't do a lot of buildings, but who said we did? We built a, a structure right here. So thank you. Thank you. Councilor Ann Mulcahy. I don't, I don't believe there is a first term counselor in the past that has had the privilege of working on this project. And it came to ONA and I read it and I said to myself, this is so organized. And, you know, I was so happy to work on it, and we worked on it for a while until we get all the verbiage correct. And, uh, as it, you know, it wasn't like it was, it was like a little baby being born, you know, and then you wait and wait and wait. And, uh, and when, it, when you finally give birth, here is this joy. And the night that we passed it here at Council, I was crying because I was so moved by the enormity of what we had completed and that it was going forward to a bigger, uh, we'll say, a, a nursery school, a bigger nursery school to be nutured. And uh, I, I was, I, when I went home that night, I watched it on TV and I cried again. And my husband said, what are you crying about? I said, we have no idea what we did tonight. I said, this is magnificent. And I said, and I was, I'm so privileged to be a part of it and thank all of you and all of us, all of my colleagues here that worked on it as well. It was, it was a great privilege. Thank you. Councilor Cookery. I uh, just want to thank Senator Tarr and Representative Ferranti for the, pushing this through so quickly. I, I, I'm still amazed. We, we've got an order here, we've got to be since tonight. That's how quick it came through. Uh, I want to thank the group. Did a terrific job. Um, glad I was part of it. I want to thank you, Roz. Roz lives in my neighborhood. I'd be going down that street and I'd say, there's Roz, she's going to talk about water. Just <laughs> grab me, put, roll down that window, and have more conversations about water. But I want to thank you, Roz. You're the driving force behind this, and I appreciate it. And I uh, just want to thank you. Any other counselors? Any other counselors? Well, I think this legislation passed in record time. And I'd like to thank you, Senator Ta and Representative Ferrante, because without you, we would have to put this on the ballot. And, and we already have the ordinance in place. So it, Plan B, we don't need Plan B. We have the most stringent bylaw that we could have because of your efforts at the State House and for you ushering it through. And, you, and, and let, I have to recognize Linda Lowe, too. Because every time we'd say, where is it, where is it? Poor Linda Lowe would get a call in the city clerk's office. Will you call Ann Margaret and find out what's going on? We'll call Bruce. We'll find out where it's going. Call Raj. Nobody dropped the ball. We were persistent. We went through to the finish line. Thank you, Linda Lowe, for your efforts. Thank you very, very much. And I just want to thank everybody here. You all deserve a round of applause. Thank you. It's not often we get to say thank you to the state, to the representatives, and to us senators, but that's what we're here for tonight. Thank you together. We did it. Thank you.